like to show you how to do a white balance with the white balance dropper and batch processing in Lightroom 3 works just the same in Lightroom 4 as well. These images were submitted by Carly from my Facebook group called F8 and let's give it a go. See how we got here. We've got a few images that are slightly blue, have a, a slightly hue, uh, white balance, uh, a little cool I would call it. What I'd like to do is select my first image here, come over to develop of course in the basic panel. We're going to click on the white balance selector. Now when you use the white balance selector you want to make sure you highlight over something solid white or something that is supposed to be white in the image. Bride's dress, t-shirt, anything like that. Now when I select the dropper you're going to notice that your navigator is going to turn colors. That's giving you a preview of what is to come when you click on that spot. So if you hover over something white, make sure these target boxes here are all white and not like partially another color. Like if you try to pick the 18, you're going to see that there's blue in there. What you can do is you can zoom to try to increase that and then you get your solid area. Now watch your color over in your navigator and I'm going to just go for right about here. Now you notice it turned a little warmer. Fill, fit that up and that's our starting point. I can go and fine-tune the adjustment with my sliders here or I can just say I like it I'm gonna keep it. So using the dropper is very easy. Click on it, find something, look at your navigator, make sure you like what you're selecting, click on it. And I selected something different just so you can see the difference. But what I really would like is right about there. Okay, with that I would like to add some more contrast and vibrance. Contrast, I don't like to go too much on the contrast, just a little bit. I don't want to clip my blacks, which means to make the black areas a solid black mass. And when I want to add more vibrance, I don't use saturation when I have people. Watch what happens. If I put too much saturation, saturation, the skin tones are affected. With vibrance, skin tones are you can oversaturate and the skin tones for the most part won't be selected. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, but in this situation it's not. So it allows me just to direct the color to the outfit. And I'm going to go about a 30. And now, we've whatever it is we decide to do, sharpen, color, contrast, recovery, any of that stuff, now we want to apply them to all our other images. Let's say we had the same effect, we had the same white balance issue with 30, 40, 100, 1,000 images, doesn't matter. You make your correction on your first image. Then you come down to your film strip. You select all the images that you want to apply that, that same badge of adjustments to. Now, there's a couple ways you can do that. You can hit control and select randomly. Okay? Or you can hit shift and select the last one in the grouping. Or you can just do control or command A and that will select all of them. Now be careful with Control A because it will select everything in your film strip. Now that we have our images selected, we always have to have the image that we edited selected in order for this to work. I want to come over to Sync, click it. Now you've got a screen here. It's going to give you all these different options. Basically, everything in this screen is located in these drop-down panels. So from cropping to effects, corrections, treatment, color, clipping, fill light, all that stuff. You can either check none and say I only want the white balance to be applied. Whatever I did with the dropper, that's it. The only thing that I want all those images to have. Or I could say check all, but don't crop it because I know I didn't crop this one, but had I cropped it, so will all the other images be cropped. So I usually, if I'm going to do a batch process and it applies to all of my corrections, I'm going to check all, remove the crop, and then hit synchronize. Watch these three images at the bottom here when I hit synchronize. Boom, done. Everything that was applied to this image, we have 24, 31, 11, and 12. 11, 12, 24, 31. All those properties are now transferred to every image that you selected. And that's going to reduce a tremendous amount of editing time when you have a, a situation like this. Now the next way 
you can go ahead and do batch processing. There's two different ways is to select all your images up front. Hit this little toggle box right here to auto sync. Select auto sync. See if you hit it, it goes to sync. But if you hit the toggle box, it goes to auto sync. Now what's going to happen, be that now that's on auto sync, whenever you do an adjustment, it's going to automatically get applied to all of the images selected. And there's nothing else to do. Make your corrections and edit a hundred at a time. Ten at a time, two at a time, doesn't matter. So those are two ways you can use AutoSync and Sync to get some batch processing done and save a lot of downtime on your editing. Now we've got um, an image here that's got some shadows and this is uh, just a little side note. The fill light in, light in Lightroom 3 is a dynamic, dynamic tool. Watch what happens. It brings a lot of those details back in those shadowed areas. And although it does kind of wash it out, the blacks can come in and just add a little bit. You don't want a lot, but just enough to bring that contrast back. And now here's our before and there's our after. Same thing before, after, before, and after. And that's about it. So dropper, pick your white balance, tweak it, uh, make your adjustments to taste to what looks good for you. Do a batch processing by selecting all and going to sync or going to auto sync, then selecting all and making your edits. I hope that answered some of your questions. Appreciate you watching. Thank you.